Hey guys, welcome to a new video. Uh, thanks for watching. Let's go ahead and get started. Today I'm going to show you how to create seamless patterns with Leonardo AI. The reason why this matters from a print on demand perspective is there's a lot of people who just love creating patterns. Me personally, it's not my uh, enjoyment. I actually like rather rather creating some other kind of stuff, but I'm, I, I'm very happy to sh still share that information. There was a video I created about a month ago called how to create these patterns, right? Leonardo AI patterns complete guide within the complete guide. I gave some criteria as to how to create these images, but there are some people in the comments and it wasn't a lot of people. It was actually a minor amount, um, that have voiced in the comments that they were experiencing let me go ahead and pause this. They were experiencing uh, some issues when it comes down to creating the actual pattern, meaning it's not truly seamless. And for those who don't know what I'm talking about, it kind of looks something like this. So let's use this pizza pattern, for example. I actually made this in video in that last video. And I'll leave a link in the description if you want to see that video. Um, when you create the image, and a lot of people, what they do is they'll test it in Canva. So they'll take the image, they'll put them across like this and they'll say nope it's not seamless it doesn't work and I agree from this kind of look it's it's kind of hard to like really match it up but um I can't say that I've experienced the same thing on a red bubble or a zazzle or something like that and to prove that I went over here this is another example of a pattern let me go ahead and take it out here and you could see I actually did this already um, I had it prepared when the video first started um, I had these two like lemon things, I put them together, and it was still, there's this line divided in the middle, even if you try to push it a little bit closer, it overlaps, it doesn't really work properly, it doesn't fit properly. But that's, I feel like, because I'm manually doing it myself, and I can't really figure out how to get it perfectly myself, it's kind of hard to do that. So, what I do is I just go straight to Redbubble, right, just go straight to Redbubble, and then when you upload it, right, you go over here. And this is an example on Redbubble. It doesn't have to be on Redbubble, uh, but you can go here and you set up the regular grid or you set up the offset grid and you see which one makes sense to use. Um, in this case, it's the regular grid, so it makes sense to use. And uh, it looks great, in my opinion. I can't really tell uh, a difference with any kind of issues here, right? The, the, and you guys tell me if, if you're seeing the same thing. It looks very well. So when you want to create the seamless patterns, I have a few suggestions and um, I'm happy to kind of share them with you. Uh, the first thing is the tiling, right? So on Leonardo AI, you have a section here called tiling. And what tiling does is it gives the machine or the AI, or whatever you want to call it, to make sure that this, the features on the left are repeating towards the right or or completing that's a better way of saying it so that when you put them together like in a box set in a in a tile sort of fashion that they all connect right now what this does also when you create your pattern it does kind of create issues depending on how you upscale so you want to pay attention to your upscale right so here for example i might use upscale image altern alternate right and that's different than for example creative upscale and I'll actually show you the difference between the two now don't get me wrong sometimes the creative upscale can work perfectly fine but sometimes it can't so you do want to play around with the different upscales right and I was trying to explain this in the comments to I forget who it was but there was like two people that had the same issue and I'm I'm making this video like to, so that you guys don't have to run into that issue again and whenever I create a pattern, I don't try to check it on Canva because I'm never going to be able to line it up properly. I just can't figure it out. And um, you could see here, guys, I wish Canva had like some sort of button to where it could tie it could do the tiling for you. Um, but it at least not from my, at least what I know of Canva, it can't I can't. Right. Unless there's some sort of way which you guys can leave in the comments down below if that's possible. But um yeah, I can't figure out how to set this all up together. So what I do is I just create the pattern and I go straight to Redbubble, for example, if I'm uploading on Redbubble, right? I might not be uploading on Redbubble that day or whatever the case may be. I might be uploading on a different day um, but or a different platform for the moment. But regardless, it doesn't matter what the product is. If it's a pattern, I'll just go over here and then I'll go to choose pattern, regular grid, boom. And you can see here, it looks perfectly fine. There's nothing that looks incorrect or wrong with it and any customer who would be look who is interested in buying this they're not going to run away from the product because it doesn't look right i mean you could just see how it looks the whole the whole pattern looks 
perfectly fine. But once again, this is the literally the exact same pattern right here that I just can't manually put together. So um, I think that might be an issue that people are running into. Uh, I'll, and I'll be here. I'll be happy to show you guys here the different types of patterns. So you have here original. This is the original image. Okay. Which by the way, you actually pretty could, you could use this alone if you just saved it, but it would be smaller. You'd have to upscale it. Um, if you want to upscale it, you could use Luminar Neo, which I'll show you guys how to do that in just a minute, but you have here the original, then you have here the creative. So the creative upscale does look a little bit different. Look, look at the difference. Okay. Here to here, the shading is different. The shapes of the flowers are a little bit different. You could go ahead and like focus on this flower, for example, right here in the middle. Okay. That's the original. That's the creative. Do you notice the difference? So it does shift how the design looks a little bit. I'm not saying that patterns won't work good with that, but I'm just saying that that is something you want to pay attention to. And also you have alternate here. So alternate is more like the original. In fact, it's almost identical. It's just a little bit more clear. So here's the original, right? And then here is the alternate. A lot closer to the alternate upscaled image is a lot closer to the original version of that pattern. So let's go ahead and do a save image as, and let's actually test this and upload it to Redbubble with the alternate image upscaled. All right, so let's go over here. Let's go into Redbubble and let's scroll up and let's do a drag and drop right here. Okay, and it's going to upload it for us. And let me actually enlarge it so you guys can see the image. Okay, this is the image right here. All right. Um, will be available on Fantasy Labs. Anyways, uh, let me go over here and let's test it. All right, not every single one is going to be perfect. Let's go ahead and test it. So I'm going to go over here. I'm going to choose pattern. I'm going to choose regular grid. And you could see it looks perfectly fine. There is no lining here. There is nothing cut off, even though the actual image is a little bit too small because it's kind of hard to see. Let's go ahead and, and enlarge it here. Uh, or do it on the laptop so it's it's a little more visible. But you can see here, there's no lines, there's no cuts. It is what we call a truly seamless pattern. All right, whenever you have those lines, kind of like here as an example, it might seem not seamless. But when I put it on a, a platform, like Redbubble or whatever, that, that does have a tiling structure to it where it can take the image and place them exactly pixel for pixel right next to each other. It, it, it takes that issue away. So... A lot of people said, is it truly possible to create, um, you know, patterns, seamless patterns on Leonardo AI? The answer is yes. And this is how you do it. Exactly that. Just what I showed you. So there is no issues with that. All right. So once again, you what you want to make sure is you want to make sure it's on tiling here. And you also want to make sure you're going with the right upscale. Now, just for the fun of it, why don't we actually test the creative upscale and see if it creates any potential issues? I'm not really 100% sure. Some people might say, well, do you know? Do you not know? There were times where I uploaded ones with the creative upscale and there were no problems whatsoever. But then there were times that they, they it did cause problems, right? So it's just different. So let's go ahead and test it. So I'm going to go ahead and upload it real quick and let's give it a shot. Let's see what happens, okay? All right, and let's take a look at, for example, the, um, let's, did I actually, I want to see here if I downloaded it properly, um, because we have the alternate, they look almost alike, but then I did download it properly because it is, we're looking right now at the creative, which I'll double click, there it is, yep, there it is, um, so yeah, it's, uh, let's go ahead and see here, regular grid, yeah, it looks fine too, so this is an example of a, of a design that looks perfectly fine when you have both type of upscales. You could see here, actually, this is even a better view um, on the mouse pad, right? It's actually more clear, and I could actually zoom in here for you guys. Um, there are no issues here. This is fully seamless, no matter what kind of upscale it is. But I do find that not all the time will the creative upscale fully be perfect, right? Because it does shift the, the way the image looks a little bit. So. Your best bet is either going with the original, upscaling it manually in Lumnar, which I'll show you how to do in just a second, like I said, or you have the alternate upscaled image. Now let me show you how to upscale the image in Lumnar, and there's actually some benefits to this. So let me go ahead. This is the original image. I'm going to go ahead and hit save image as. We're going to save it, and we're going to open up Luminar Neo. All right, I'm going to open it up. Now I'll leave a link in the description to the cheapest place where you can get Luminar Neo. Uh, like I've said this in all my other videos where I mentioned Luminar Neo, Neo, there's a bunch of places where you can get it. 
and all the different brokers that sell it offer it at different prices okay so i've seen a whole range of prices i've even seen one website sell it for 150 dollars a month which you know it's not realistic for somebody to pay 150 dollars a month for this product i think i pay either 10 bucks or 15 bucks a month something like that um but it does a phenomenal job editing designs. So this is the original. This is the one that's not upscaled. Let me go ahead and drag it and drop it here so I can show you guys what I'm talking about. Let's go to all photos and let's add the photo. Okay, now let's go over here and go to edit. Okay, when I go to edit, what I can do, first of all, before I even upscale, you guys know I like to bring the smart contrast up, make it look a little bit better, sometimes even bring the exposure down. You know, it does shift the way the image looks. You know, that's a completely different image, and then I just drag it and drop it here into the upscale. And now I can pick how big I want it to be upscaled. So let's say I want it to be upscaled at, let's say, 4x the size. Well, then it will be 4 times 512 pixels by 1024. So that's probably going to be about maybe 6,000 pixels in height or close to that, um, or 496 pixels basically the image is loading and there we go now we have the upscaled version with the color change it looks amazing and like i said with lumnar i can remove certain things that might not look as clean so what i would do if i was editing right and i'll just kind of show you here do you guys see this little this little mark right here i can edit this the reason why i can edit this is because it's not touching any of these corners right any of these lines from left to right or top to bottom and that's what controls the tiling so I can go over here and I can pull up my eraser button right and this is like a AI eraser and I could just go ahead and just highlight it just like that and now what I could do is hit erase and look at what it's gonna do it completely disappears and that's an example of cleaning up the design now honestly with the pattern uh, it it doesn't matter too much, right? Because these patterns are so in uh, there's so much detail going on It's hard for somebody to really pinpoint an error. Uh, I see another error here like this for example Okay, I can take these and I can erase them. All right these little errors. No big deal Let me go ahead and erase them boom. There you go. That's an example Okay, and I could do that like I said because it's in the middle I'm not touching the corners necessarily because the corners are what's used to tile the image together and then once I'm done I could just sit here export the image etc and the job is finished so that's exactly how you can create these seamless patterns like I said focus on the tiling button here make sure that the um, most cases most cases you either want to go with the original image or the alternate upscaled image okay not necessarily the creative the creative can can be perfectly fine at times but it's not a guarantee at all times. And also, I would not take my image and try to fit it here in Canva. Currently, to my knowledge, uh, Canva does not have this feature where I could just put the images together, um, you know, perfectly fine. I think part of the reasons, too, is that we see, like, a line like this is because it's so intricate of a design. There's so many details that it's hard to really put it together. I just, I wouldn't be able to. Um, but as you saw, like I said... Redbubble did a phenomenal job doing this with all of the designs, not just like one of them. So let me go ahead, first of all, and zoom out here. Um, but yeah, that's kind of how you do it. All right, guys. And for anybody who's watching this and kind of wondering why do I not sell patterns that much or why don't I do patterns that much? It's just patterns are alone. They're cool. But there's a million other people selling patterns, and I like to differentiate myself. I like to create better looking products. I like to create products that people are actively searching for, which is not something I just talk about. I actually teach it in my courses. I explain these kind of things. I show how to do these things. So that's just something that's my mentality. I try not to sell what everybody else is doing or what everybody else is you know, moving that way. But in fact, I think patterns overall are pretty good elements for Zazzle, for example. Zazzle products, they work great for that, but just as elements, not as the whole entire component of the design. But that's a whole this different discussion for a different day. I hope this video helps. Thank you for watching, and peace out. Bye.